few videos on the screen. Change does not occur because our young people have bought into the fact that God is doing something new. Change occurs when each individual looks into their own heart and says, God, if there's something in me that should not be, take it out. Because I want to be a good Christian soldier. Ah, uh, Jeremiah was right in prophesying that this resistance to change is a formula for living outside of sound reasoning. Because the psalmist once said, thy word, O oh God, yeah. is a lamp to lead my feet. Yeah. And I like to show the way I should walk. Yeah. Some of us never want to study God's word because we want to walk the way we want to walk. How we want to walk. When we want to walk. But Jeremiah said the good news today is that personal convictions can cause one to rebel against the ways of God. Because an evil heart is a heart that is only satisfied with pleasing self. And a heart that is satisfied with pleasing self can be just like that crowd that Jesus fed a multitude with, with five loaves and two fish. And yet when the master said it's just an illustration, if you don't ever want to be hungry again, eat of me. Yeah. And the crowd realized how serious Jesus was. Yeah. And the crowd said, if you're serious about us eating you, we are going to leave this place. Mm -hmm. And the 66th verse said that when they realized he was, they left him. Here is the tragedy. And followed him no more. Might I suggest that there are persons that Jeremiah is speaking to today. We got to let these personal convictions go that are based on self-righteousness. If it's in the word, stand on it day and night. But trust me, when you stand on the word, it's not just going to help you. What I always tell my family is if you're really standing on godly principle, it ought not just help your situation. It ought to help the situation of others. Because when they mimic it, when they see it, when you exemplify it, when you share it, it is going to be just as productive to them as it was to you. And so Jeremiah says the good news is that God looks for devotion. I don't know about you, but I can say for myself that there are times when I have to put my heart into question. I want to do the best I can. I want to please God in every way, but every now and then as I come across a new scripture, I come to the conclusion that God's word convicts me yeah. that I'm not all that in a bag of chips, that I haven't quite arrived to be listed 100 top preachers in the country. I realize I still have some growth and that I have to be faithful to the cause of Christ. Sometimes that's going to change your heart change your conviction, uh oh, and change the way you do things. I remember, I remember when I moved from uh, pastorate down in Dinwiddie, I used to wear the long robe. When I started here, I had the long robe till I could get the short robe. And the first thing people said, well, you ain't really a preacher with that short robe on. <laughs> Lord have mercy. I remember, I remember vividly people trying to justify. And they said, well, you know the robe is in the Bible. I said, well, if that's the case, then this robe ought to make a whole lot of noise. <laughs> because the robes that the priests wore in the Bible had bells on them. And I don't think y'all want the bell. Not because of the noise, but because of what it represents. It represents anybody who's in the presence of the priest who is unholy. The bells would ring. And not just for the preacher. See, it could be quiet up here. But if he started walking out there, and he'd walk to row four. Hope ain't nobody row four. Row one. And the bells would go off. The Bible says not only was that a recognition that somebody was unholy, watch this, the spirit would strike them down dead on the spot. See, that's why I said many of us, we always talk about we want the old time religion, do we? Do you really want it? Because if you really want it, God don't mind providing it. But just don't get upset when you get it. Hallelujah. 
speaking to somebody. So Jeremiah says, the prophet declares, don't worry. Don't give up hope. If your heart's not exactly where it needs to be, guess what God's action is in this text? He says he will appoint you. <laughs> no, you ain't going to like it. But I'm preaching what's in the word. He appoints you shepherds. Can I help somebody in here? The reason you haven't been delivered, you refuse to listen to your prophet. I don't mind saying it. I know you won't gonna say amen. You don't have to. I'm preaching Jeremiah here today and unapologetically. And the fact is, if you don't want to listen to me, you're avoiding and blocking your own blessing. Amen. That's in the text. It says, I, I being God, I appointed you. In other words, when the people said, who's going to fix my heart? He said, I gave you pastors. But you chose not to listen. You impeached them. You decided to take your frustration out on them rather than looking at yourself. And it says, I appointed you shepherds to lead you into knowledge and understanding. Thank you, First Lady. This morning she shared in using her emphasis of Sunday school. She said what has happened in the church is that people have suffered spiritual heart attacks. Yes. Now you get a heart attack because of several factors. One of the main ones is your diet and your lifestyle. If you don't eat right and live right, you are a victim and a subject and a candidate for a heart attack. Well, if you don't eat God's word right, if you don't live right according to God's standards, you we are subject to a spiritual heart attack. And that's why sometimes we wonder, can somebody actually get up and say that in church? Heart attack. <laughs> Did I just see that person do that in church? Spiritual heart attack. When somebody has a spiritual heart attack, they say stuff. They do stuff. They believe stuff because the heart attack has impressed them so much. But the good news is, he says, I can stop the heart attack if you respect the one I gave you. Now listen to this. He says, now you can go to the word for yourself. But until you get confirmation from the one I sent, how do you know what you're studying is what I have for you? I was wondering, and I shared this with some of our spiritual leaders earlier, that one of the things we have to understand, God does movements in the church, and unfortunately, we run to the movement and not see what God is doing. When God has a movement in the church, he doesn't ask you to start a new church. He's asking you to take notice of what I want to do in all churches. 